All right, so gap dehydrogenase is one of the first enzymes in glycolysis where we are able to pay off the initial investment uh, of the energy that we invested earlier in glycolysis. And glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which is the product of our triose phosphate and our aldolase, um, is going to be reacted with NAD and phosphate to give us an NADH, which remember around 3 ATP apiece, and 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Uh, this has an acetyl phosphate group in it, which we're going to cash in in the next step for some ATP. But to start out, we have the enzyme active site, where we have a cysteine, a histidine, and NAD as a substrate, and a phosphate as a substrate, as well as our, G a our GAP, our G3P, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So what's going to happen here is our histidine is going to attack this hydrogen on the cysteine. Bond electrons are going to attack at our carbonyl and develop a negative charge here. So this is going to form what's called the thioester intermediate, which we're going to see a lot of and is a very common way of adding new groups and doing chemistries on carbonyls, especially aldehydes. We'll see it again when we um, work on the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Okay, so keep that in mind. So now we have our good old thioester. You can see that it's uh, actually our tetrahedral intermediate. Um, so if we want to make a thioester, we need to form our double bond back again. So we can do that pretty easily here. Uh, and notice again that our histidine has become protonated from stealing the cysteine hydrogen last time. Nothing else has really changed. But we can make our double bond back to make our thioester intermediate by pushing that pair down from oxygen. Now we could also always lose our cysteine here, kick it back off uh, and protonate, but that would just be going backwards in the mechanism. That doesn't get us anywhere. So instead what we're going to do is push this H- minus with its pair of electrons onto NAD and again force our resonance forms through and solve the positive charge problem here on uh, nitrogen. So that's going to give us our thioester. And a thioester always looks kind of like this. It's a would look like an ester but with an S in it. So that's our thioester. And we're going to have that next time. Okay. Now the sulfurs are easier to break off than oxygens are or nitrogens. So it's going to be easy for us to put this on and take it off uh, in the next couple of seconds. So now we've formed NADH, of course, uh, which is one of our first products. We're going to release that. Okay. Um, and we have our thioester uh, intermediate. Uh, but we are trying to make 1,3-BPG. Now we had to put a phosphate onto this carbon. Okay, uh, This phosphate is going to be the one that does it, and the phosphate is actually going to be responsible for cleaving this bond. And so it's just going to do this by a simple attack at the carbonyl. And what we're going to have happen here is, of course, we're going to make another tetrahedral intermediate um, with this, and we're going to resolve that in the next step. So here's our tetrahedral intermediate. We see our phosphate is bound into that old carbonyl carbon. Our sulfur is still there. And all we need to do is resolve here. So we can reform our double bond. And we're going to kick off our, our cysteine here uh, by protonating here with our, our histidine. So we're going to form our 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. We're going to recharge our cysteine. And notice we're going to recharge our histidine. So we're ready to go again once we pick up new substrates on the next round. So this reaction finishes with 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, which has a 1 and 3 phosphor group, 1 here and 1 and 3 here. And this system here, this was, looks like, kind of like an anhydride, is a high-energy bond that we're going to cash in for ATP in the next round using uh, substrate-level phosphorylation. It's going to be the first time we actually yield real ATP from this reaction. Now, of course, remember that this gap dehydrogenase reaction runs twice for every glucose because we've broken one glucose into two, uh, three, uh, three phosphoglycerates, so, um, or three phosphoglyceraldehydes, um, so glyceraldehyde three phosphates. So this is going to run twice, and so we're going to end up with two NADH per glucose which is approximately 6 ATP. And that 
pays off all of the investment we made in the first part of glycolysis in making our six our glucose six phosphate and our fructose one six bisphosphate. Um, now we're going to start cashing in and starting to make some uh, some net gains here uh, in our reaction.